mystery. For the modern mind, the word evokes a misty fog, utterly alien to the world of science. That fogginess is why the American founding father, Thomas Jefferson, found the church's great mysteries intolerable, even deceptive. Even the central mystery of Christianity was suspect. Ideas must be distinct before reason can act upon them, Jefferson once wrote to a friend. And no man ever had a distinct idea of the Trinity. It is the mere abracadabra of the tricksters, calling themselves the priests of Jesus. Indeed, in the teachings of Christianity, mistiness abounds. Jesus Christ is fully God, but also fully man. The Eucharist is the true body of Christ, but appears as bread and wine. Salvation is a pure gift of God's grace, but worked out in fear and trembling. In each of these teachings, we do not find a single distinct idea, but rather two seemingly contradictory ideas. Can an honest person of sound mind profess such apparent contradictions amid the clarity and sobriety of the scientific method? Yet according to modern science, the physical universe has its own mistiness. Paradoxes that arise not from what we do not know, but from what we do. Consider the science of light. Since ancient times, philosophers have wondered about the nature of physical light. And at the dawn of modern science, it became a source of controversy among the pioneers of the scientific revolution. One of those scientists was a personal hero of Thomas Jefferson, the great Sir Isaac Newton. Newton adopted the theory of the Catholic priest and physicist Pierre Gassendi, who speculated that light was a property of atoms. In other words, that light is a particle. Summarizing 33 years of experimentation with lenses and mirrors, Newton's work, Optics, set out to prove that light consists of corpuscles, which literally means tiny bodies. From sunlight to soap suds to rainbows, he carefully classified most patterns of light in terms of the reflection or refraction of these luminous bits of matter. The riddle of light had been resolved, but only momentarily. Before Newton, another priest, the Italian Jesuit Francesco Grimaldi, had observed something else. In a darkened room, with only a tiny hole allowing light to stream in. Grimaldi discovered that light flows around objects and reforms its patterns. As we see in ocean waves, this bending of light he called diffraction. In the 19th century, the Catholic physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel further demonstrated the reality of diffraction, leading to the almost unanimous acceptance of the wave model of light. Is light a particle, or is it a wave? In 1905, Albert Einstein finally resolved the debate. It is, in fact, both. Light is beyond any easy classification. It is paradoxical. In a word, it is mysterious. Einstein saw what many before him could not, that understanding light is not a matter of choosing between the two models. Light behaves like a particle in some circumstances and like a wave in others. Particle language and wave language are mere approximations of a richer reality. 
As Einstein wrote, it seems as though we must sometimes use one image and sometimes the other, while at times we may use either. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light, but together they do. Light escapes the distinct ideas of human minds, even a mind as great as Albert Einstein's. This wave-particle duality, as it came to be called, was not only true of light. Since Einstein, it has been shown to be true of all matter. The subatomic particles in our own bodies can only be detected as particles when measured. In between, they are moving, undulating. Once again, physical reality is deeper, stranger, and more wonderful than the human mind can fathom. But in knowing this, we know reality better than if we were to only settle for one idea or the other. In the words of the physicist Richard Feynman, we choose to examine a phenomenon which is impossible, absolutely impossible to explain in any classical way. It contains the only mystery. The metaphor of light has great significance in virtually all religions, but especially in Christianity. Jesus, the Word become flesh, declares in St. John's Gospel, I am the light of the world. In his first letter, St. John adds, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And in the Middle Ages, the great abbess, St. Hildegard of Bingen, used the image of a glowing flame to describe the Trinity. As the flame of a fire has three qualities, she writes, so there is one God in three persons. By the brilliant light, understand the Father. By the red power, understand the Son. And by the fiery heat, understand the Holy Spirit. What is true of physical light must be even more true of the light in whom there is no darkness. To know reality, we must relinquish complete knowledge. Long before the scientific revolution, the cardinal and philosopher Nicholas of Cusa captured this in a fictional dialogue between a pagan and a Christian whom the pagan finds at prayer. Who are you? I ask. I am a Christian. What are you worshipping? God. Who is this God whom you worship? I don't know. How is it that you worship so seriously that of which you have no knowledge? Because I am without knowledge of Him, I worship Him. Only a God who cannot be fully known, whose truth surpasses our comprehension, could be the true God and worthy of our adoration. In the words of Joseph Ratzinger, what is true here in the physical realm is true in an incomparably greater degree of the spiritual realities and of God. Only by circling around, by looking and describing from different, apparently contrary angles, can we succeed in alluding to the truth which is never visible to us in its totality. Here, science and faith meet in humility, in awe, and in wonder. Scientific discovery does not only offer distinct ideas. When the truth requires it, it also reveals the mysteries deep within physical reality and faith professes the ultimate mystery, which is God. But the mysteries of God raise the mind to adoration. They become the light of the mind itself, illuminating the meaning of human life itself. To live in the love of God and neighbor 
creating communities of truth, communion, and light shining before the world. Darkness will never prevail against that light, for it radiates from the risen Jesus. The heavenly city to which we journey, St. John tells us in his prophetic vision, had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb, the Lamb whom all Christians profess as God from God and light from light. Thank you.